So this is what happens down in my workshop when I'm brainstorming activities. I take some of my two by fours, which were left over from when I remodeled my little studio, and I put them to good use. I'm building a giant cube to test airflow, static pressure, and anything else I can think of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a two by four frame. There's gonna be a grill, 20 by 20 on one side. And whenever I get it all assembled, I can put that shop blower, which you saw in the previous frame, inside of this deal. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna encase this thing in metal. I'm gonna blow a supply air out the side of it, seal it up right there. So that entire plenum is basically a return plenum. And I'm going to test how much airflow goes through the grill. I love building stuff like this. I can put the Milwaukee M12s to good use. And I'm gonna tell you what, buddy, they are pretty darn good. So here I am, I'm very industrious, guys. I'm taking some of the leftover pipe from my HVAC career and putting it to good use because I'm never gonna use it anywhere else. Seal everything up, I'm gonna take some tape and seal it up as well. Again, I'm so thrifty, guys. All these screws you see in here are 5 16th screws that I had out of units that I broke down. Here I am fitting the blower inside of it. There you see it again. I'm gonna put the grill on the front of it. This is all designed so I can use a CPS flow hood to test the airflow because it's 20 by 20. Guys, I'm standing here in the HVAC Shop Talk Laboratory, an unofficial laboratory with no accreditation whatsoever, next to this beast. And I know you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. What the hell is this? Well, this is a contraption that I built. It's a work in progress. So any critiquing, hold your tongue just a little bit longer. I might even paint it and write the death mobile on the side or something like that for those of you who know where that came from. If you do, put it in the chat. It's a great movie. So what I have is I have a return grill. I have a blower inside here, which is a little shop blower that I use just to stay cool in the summertime. I've mounted it in a way that's going to throw supply air out the other side, which you can see here in the picture. And we can take airflow readings from this side. It has three speeds. From what I can tell, it throws from three to 500 CFM or so, something like that. So we're going to test out the new CPS Easy Hood. We're going to pit it against the DAFM3 from UEI. We're going to do some ongoing airflow tests using this beast right here. But the first thing I want to do is test out the CPS Easy Hood on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these manometers right here. We have the Testo and the UEI manometer measuring static pressure on the return side of this system. So we can see how it changes when we put these hoods on here. Of course, the DAFM3 is going to present no problem because it doesn't block the airflow, but the hood definitely restricts the airflow a little bit. So we're gonna see how that changes and we're gonna compare the readings. Right here we have the CPS Easy Hood. Your phone fits right there like this. I'll use my very masculine phone. Fits in here like this with a Bluetooth connection. It actually connects to the CPS meter on the inside. A lot of you know that. It's like the old AAB meter. It's basically the same thing. So this measures airflow coming through this grid into this funnel and you see a little readout on your phone right here. The hood itself, you can see how large it is. I believe it's 24 by 24, so it fits on a 2 by 2. And yes, there we are. Little latches right here. These are a little bit of a pain to get into place, but it's not too awful bad. It seems to make a pretty good seal whenever you put it into place. It has a little foam gasket that goes around it. So we're going to try this thing, and we're going to measure the difference in static pressure when we put it on because this is going to restrict flow right here. The only way it's not going to restrict much flow is if you have a low CFM, but because we're pushing 300 to 500 CFM, it's definitely going to be restricted a little bit. So we're going to see what kind of change that makes, and we're going to compare it to the DAFM3 because it doesn't restrict flow. Guys, we're going to turn this blower on low speed. We're going to measure it with the flow hood, but first we're going to plug it in and compare what our static readings are before. We're going to measure how much resistance that this flow hood puts on that airstream. So as we see, we're at zero, or 0 0.01, which is essentially zero. We're gonna plug this thing in. It's on low speed. Doesn't really change a whole lot. Low speeds, lower CFM, we have this huge opening. So it's really not gonna put that much strain on the return side airstream. So let's put the flow hood on. We'll see how much resistance appears as far as static pressure. We'll see what kind of CFM measurement we get as well.
We're hovering near 300 CFM. Let's see how much pressure we have. 0.12 on the UEI, 0.18 on the HTI. They're in two different locations. The UEI is here right beneath the testing instruments and the HTI is over here near the opening of the blower just to compare and see what kind of different statics we get. It's bound to be a little turbulent over there near the blower, so I wasn't really sure what would happen. And we're staying right around 300 CFM or so. So that's our measurement with the CPS flow hood. Let's compare and contrast with what we find out with the DEA FM3 from UEI. Here's one of the things I wanted to test out, guys. I want to plug in this blower, and what I want to do is see how much of this grill we have to cover up so that our static equals about 0.12, which is where it was when we had the hood up there, just as a reference point. So we're going to plug it in and check that out. We're going to salute the sponsors here today by using their shirt. So let's start right here. So we have 0 0.04. Let's extend it down. You see the blower starts to get a little bit louder. There we are. So right here and right here are the only open spots on this grill, and that's what equals the resistance that our hood put on there on the return side static. One of the first things we have to do when doing a test with the vein anemometer, anem anemometer, anemometer, and flanginate. The first thing we have to do with the UEI air tester is that we have to look up and see what the engineering data is for this particular grill or find something that's really similar to this grill. So I went to the Hart and Cooley website and I'm gonna show you right now what I did as far as locating the free area of this grill. So right now we're looking at Hart and Cooley engineering data for a return air filter grill with half inch fin spacing. It's a 673. So we're over here on the page and we can see that this is the grill that we're working on, but we have a 20 by 20 size. So we're gonna click on engineering data over here and I've already brought it up. You can see that we're gonna enlarge it. We enlarge the engineering data and we go down to 20 by 20, which is right here. We can see that we have an AK of 1.8. Eight. That's going to be our free area left on the grill. So we're going to use that 1.8 to get our CFM with the DAFM3, and we can compare it to the CPS flow hood. So now that we know the AK is 1.8, we're going to go in here, and we're going to change the mode to volume, area, 1.8 is our area, and then we can select our CFM based on a time test that we can start and stop with this button right here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a time test and see how it compares to the 300-ish CFM that the CPS flow hood determined was going through that grill. What I like to do on these tests is to take my time, spend an equal amount of time on each one of those fin rows, keeping the DAFM3 head about one inch away from the testing surface. And as you can see, we have 330 CFM. Many of you are probably drawing the same conclusion that I am, that the CPS Easy Hood restricts flow. Thus, if you have a high CFM being measured, you're gonna get an errant measurement. But I don't wanna just say that because maybe there's something I'm doing wrong. Maybe there's something that I'm missing. So I contacted CPS on Tuesday to ask them that question. I described my situation. They said they were gonna check with their product support, then let me know. That was on Tuesday. As of Thursday, I checked again with no answer. They did see my message, I can see that on the screen, but there's been no clarification on whether or not the test that I ran was actually showing a flaw with the CPS Easy Hood or that I missed something, I didn't measure it correctly. So we're going to tune in next week, and hopefully there'll be an answer by then. I might have to badger them a little bit because I'd like to know. I don't want to do a test and have some big difference because that is a big difference. Between 300 and 340, that's a 10% difference, basically. We'll call it 10%. And if you're doing some sort of test and balance or you're trying to do a capacity calculation, there's no way you can use that sort of measurement. So we're going to see what happens, guys. 
Let me know what you think about this test. Was there something you would change? Was there something you thought was fantastic? Do you know something about the Easy Hood that I don't know? Or maybe something about the UEI Anonymous that I don't know. Put it in the chat. Put it in the comments. I'd be eager to see. Tune in next week for more tests just like this. And now we're going to get back to the show.